record. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Let me take my shoes off. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to class today. We're going to work with the chair. Um, have a, a, a couple of blocks. And if you have a strap, go ahead and put that strap in a nice big loop because uh, we're going to use that. Um, and then just some housekeeping rules. Um, if you're using a chair, um, all four legs of the chair should be on your yoga mat so that it, it uh, sticks. And, um, and if your chair is at all tippy, um, it would be up against a wall or something so that you have that little safety in case the chair tips. Um, and also when we're using a chair, we always want to make sure our hands are solid on the chair, you know, so that as we're leaning forward, moving, um, it's nice and solid on the chair. All right. So, and I'm probably saying that a couple more times as we're going. So let's go ahead and plant our feet, sit up really well, um, ideally not leaning against the chair, uh, back of the chair so that we have a nice tall spine. Maybe take the shoulders up and squeeze them back and let them come down one more just like that squeeze up squeeze them back and let them come down and then let the hands rest anywhere on the legs or at the lap that feels good to you close the eyes and find your breath And maybe feel your feet on uh, whatever surface is there. Just feel your feet and notice what is it that you feel? Where do your feet land heavier? Is it more to the inside, more to the outside? Can you tap into the center of your feet? Maybe feel some of the toes. Start to tap into your breath. Taking a nice deep breath in. Exhaling it all the way out. Inhaling deep breath. And exhaling it. Good. One more just like that. And exhale. And then just lift the toes and the ball mounds uh, off the floor so that you're just on the heels of your feet and you're squeezing them up, right? What are we engaging here? The um, anterior tibialis anterior, the front shin muscles. Woo, yeah. And I'm feeling those because we've been doing some hills lately. So just squeeze them up and then leave your, I'm going to mirror here, leave your left foot down, lift your right foot, extend it straight out, bring it back in and then just drop the heel. Keep them flexed if you can. If you start to cramp or the muscles get really tired, then just drop those feet and give it a moment. Good. Other foot, dig one down, lift the other, extend it out and bring it in and just drop the heel, good. Maybe take the hands to the sides of your chair, lift the first side, extend it out. See if you can hold, lift your chest, everybody. Maybe take the arms up, squeeze the imaginary beach ball. Woo good, bend the knee, release both hands and heel. And lift the other, lift the chest, take the arms up. Big deep breath, everyone. Extend it all the way out. Hold, dig in with the other heel if you can and bend that knee and let go. Ooh, good, shake that out. Let's take one leg into figure four. I know this is not for everybody. This might be too deep. If it is, we just straighten that leg a little bit. Just watch the knee and just wiggle a little side to side on your chair. If we're sitting a lot, if we're doing a, um, a lot of stuff that tightens up both the hamstring and the hip, um, this muscle, this uh, hip can get really tight. So take it back to the center optional. One, you stay here. That's all the stretch you need. Two, take the arms up. 
You're going to swan dive forward, check out those hips, maybe drop the arms. You can interlace underneath your legs if you want or in front. Pause here. Find your breath. And imagine, right, so feel the sit bones and imagine the sit bones pressing toward the back of the chair so that the uh, pelvis uh, anteriorly tilts a little bit. In other words, we're making the sacrum and the lower back really long here. We're reaching the sit bones back. We're stretching that hip. Release here. Inhale, reach up. Good, listen up, release that leg, extend it out. Let's get some work going and release both. Nice job, everybody. Let's go right to the other side. Coming into figure four, I'm always like, my, did my feet get dirty? Um, <laughs> so coming into the other side, we're just gonna rock side to side. Always one side's different than the other, right? So we're just gonna check it out and see how it is. I often think when we do stuff like this, the body goes, oh, okay, this isn't serious. We can relax, <laughs> right? That hip can relax. And then take it to center, lift up really tall already, right? You can feel the sit bones move back. The chest gets tall. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Let those hands wrap anywhere that they feel normal. They feel okay. You don't have to go this long. And then imagine the sit bones drawing toward the back seat. Breathe. Is it obvious one side tighter than the other? Is it more subtle for you? Do you tend to cross your legs when you sit, which can really throw the hips off? I think that's one of the hardest habits to stop. Good, breathe. <clears throat> and then release, inhale, reach up. Arms stay up, leg extends out, lift tall, and really shake those legs out, maybe straighten them. All right, so a little seated core work. It's going to feel pretty subtle. We're going to be lifting one knee. The hands come behind the head. They're just gently touching the back of the head. The first thing I want you to do is just lift and not crunch, right? So tap, squeeze, three, just two more, four. Five. If your lower back is okay, now we're going to crunch. Try to bring your chin to your knee. Don't go too deep. Two, three, mm -hmm. four, and five. Pause. You're going outside. One elbow to knee. Two, whoo, three, four, Five, keep the upper body tall and just squeeze up and down. Squeeze, keep the upper body up. Three, squeeze, hesitate at the top. Four, whoo, and five, and release. Take that out. <laughs> Good, breathe, breathe, breathe. And then bend those uh, knees, feet to the floor, hands come behind. First, we stay tall. Just bring it up. And notice, right, how much do you have to lean back to get there? Just see if you can stay tall. One, and tap, two, three, pause at the top, four, feel this belly working, five, good, add the crunch if you'd like, one, go slow, two, love getting the core work out of the way, three, four, squeeze in the middle, Five, good, crunch to the outside. One, and two, Woo. three, yep, four, five, keep the torso tall, still crunch to the outside. One, two, pause at the top. Three, oblique and hip, four, and five, Woo. and let that go. <laughs> and breathe, everybody. Okay, so this one will get just a little trickier. You're going to lean back slightly. Hang on to your chair. Please don't lean back so much that you tip. We're going to lift two, three, <laughs> four. I'm already moving ahead. Six, seven. Feel right here. Eight, nine, 
10 pause. If that was uh, challenging, stay right there. Just slow it down. Two, you're going to lean back, lift both. One, tap. Two, three, four, five more. See if you can hold that torso. Seven, eight, yep, nine, and 10. And let go. Shake that out, everybody. Woo. And breathe. <clears throat> hold on to the sides of your chair. Lift one knee, lift the other knee. Lean back if you need to lean back to the back chair. It's okay. Extend out. Bend, release. Ooh. Yep, lift, extend, bend, release. Just three more, lift, extend. Bolt pose, right? Down, two left. I know I'm feeling my legs more than my core. That's it. Up, down, last one, breathe. And let go. Holy moly. Good. Shake out those legs. And I liked what Carrie did a minute ago. Just turn sideways on your chair and maybe bring one leg back and just soften it. If you're comfortable at the top, uh, the top of your foot, that back one, just let it extend back so the toes are down. Just stretch out what we did. And release that side. Walk your way over to the other side. Same thing. Just drop the foot. Find your breath. Deep breath. And release. Come on back to the front. Grab your strap. So we have the strap nice and long. It's only going to work. It's going to work depending on how tall, or, tall you are. I am 5'7". So I have plenty of strap, but if you are taller still, you might run out. You're going to take that strap around your chest, and then you're just going to lean forward and step on it. Ideally, you've got the tail of your strap where you can reach it uh, when we come back up. We're not going to stay in this crazy position, but I want to make sure that the strap is right up at the shoulder blades. And then hang on to it as you lift that foot. You're going to know if you need to extend the strap. If you can, extend the leg and then push into the ball mound and feel your chest move forward. I'll turn sideways here so maybe you can see. Right As I extend the chest lifts, here it is again, this variation of boat pose. I'm going to lift up really tall and then maybe take the arms out. If I don't have a lot of tension here, it's not going to be nearly as effective. So you can bend more, keep the shoulder blades tipping in, keep the chest lifting, tone through the lower belly, by the way, and breathe. Good. Release. You're going to come to the other side. And you don't have to step on it if you've got if you've got that range where you can just loop your foot and then extend out. And you may notice one leg a little longer than the other, a little tighter than the other. So we're gonna press out. And as I press out through that strap, the chest lifts, I'm gonna push the ball mound uh, into the strap more to lift up even more. Again, I'll turn just a little sideways and lift that chest, like really feel yourself get tall and then take the arms out. The belly should be toned, you're comfortable on your chair. The other foot is stamping down. Good, breathe everybody. Hold on to your strap, release your leg and come back to the center. We've got one more both sides. We're gonna add on one thing. Go back to your first foot. And again, um, uh, always pick the one that works for you. So we're going to start here. If that was challenging or you didn't feel real sturdy, stay right here. This time you're going to hold on, extend the leg out, put the heel into the floor, lift your chest. If you can, lift the other leg. Ooh, if you can, yep, big old balance pose. Take the arms up. Find that balance on your chair. You feel tippy at all. That foot comes back down. Breathe and hold your strap 
and let go. <laughs> We're flying, everybody. We're flying. <laughs> well, in the chairs Carrie and I are using, the seats are very slippery. So it makes it a little extra challenging. I feel like we need a little sticky mat on the chair. So first, get the pose, everybody. Lift the chest. If you're here, I'm happy, right? If you want to play, you extend the leg out, dig the heel in. That's going to make you work more. If not, try to lift, whew, then take the arms up. You're finding this sweet little balance. Breathe. Feel the chest lift, and as the chest lifts, the breath gets deeper. And hold on to your strap, and then let go. Ooh, good job, everybody. Take that strap out. Set your strap aside for now. Just grab your block. Take that block between your thighs. I got new blocks. Aren't those pretty? I know. <laughs> I you I could never see the gray ones. Everything I wore, it would just they would just wipe out. So now I got colorful blocks. All right, your feet are on the floor. You are squeezing your block. Lift up tall. And again, notice how does this feel in your body? What's happening? What's working? Big deep breath. Hold on to the chair legs. Your hips scoot toward the front. Both feet lift. Both feet flex. The chest lifts as if you had that strap there. Keep the legs bent. Take it up again. Balance work. Boat pose. Finding our breath. Using our core. Deep breath. And release. Yay. All right. Let's let that go. Set your blocks aside for now. Now, here's an interesting one, and I always thought this was easy, um, but um, but then I found out from one student it wasn't so easy. <laughs> so um, I do want you to be comfortable with this. If you have any fear about sitting back down in your chair, just don't do it. Just squat instead. Okay, so what we know is the chair's not going to move. Our legs are not going to move. The first thing we do from a fitness standpoint is, can you get up from a chair without using your hands? Simple as that, right? Because that determines leg strength. And there are some scientific studies that say the, the more easily you can do that, the longer you're going to live. So your feet are hips width apart. Your chair is there. If you're not sure, step back a little bit more. Your hands stay at your chest, and you're going to have a seat. <sighs> For some, <laughs> For some, you swear that chair's going to move, and you want to look. Um, so this is a little bit of trust, but don't push it, okay? I once almost sent somebody into a panic attack, so I don't want to do that. If it doesn't work for you, what you're going to do is you're going to stand and you're going to squat and then you're going to stand. Okay. So sit, use your core. You're going to lean forward some, but try not to do that kind of move. Okay. And down, push up, stamp your feet and breathe. Three, four, watch the knees. And five, squeeze your hips. Six, seven, yep, you are going to start to feel this. Eight, and nine. Oh, yeah, last one. And ten, stay tall. Shake that out. So, right, very interesting. There was a study done how many of those you can do in 30 seconds determines your health. So just play with that. I cannot remember the exact number, but it was somewhere between 10 and 15 in 30 seconds. So it's a big push. All right, so inhale, everybody. Exhale, just a squat. Watch the knees sit back through the sit bones. Take the arms out, chair pose, right? <laughs> chair pose without the chair. <laughs> and breathe, and then imagine that strap is behind your shoulder blades as the chest lifts, but the belly tones in, and then push back, L-shape, the arms go behind you. Good, bend the knees, breathe, yep, 
I know I did a bunch of leg work last class. Here we are again. And push back, lift the hips, straighten the legs. Last one. Breathe. Watch the knees, sit back in that chair and stand all the way up. And exhale. Woo! Shake those out, everybody. And take your chair to the top edge of your mat and really um, make sure all four legs are on the chair so it doesn't slip. And then just know, chances are, your chair is going to tilt. So I want you to be mindful of, of that. Your blocks are nearby. In fact, take one block to either side of your chair legs and pause. Now, for my friend out there who's got the arm, possibly you can come to elbows or we're just not going to use hands on the chair for you, okay? So inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. You can take your hands to your blocks, to your chair, or you can take the elbows lightly to the chair. And just breathe here for a second. Right, so often we rush through, we rush through life, we rush through um, our work, we rush to get here and there. We're just going to take it down a notch. Maybe notice where you are on your feet, right? Are you way forward or way back? Find your breath. And if your hands are low, take them to your chair and come halfway up. Now, this is a very soft touch, <clears throat> a very soft touch here on the chair. Bend your knees, step back with your right leg and come into a lunge. Now, almost everybody has to adjust the left leg forward. And for my dear friend, Julie, right, you're soft. Your hands are not touching or maybe you're resting on your knee here. I don't want any pressure on that. And feel the back leg. Just feel the back leg and feel the chest lift. So, Carrie, I would step further forward with that left foot, and then you can adjust your back foot forward so that you're not so far away from the chair. Yeah. <sighs> Breathe, everybody. If you can, come to your elbows. This is going to get deep. One chair doesn't fit everybody. So for some, this is a perfect height. For others, this is too low or too high. Push through your back leg. Find your breath. You're probably feeling that front hip, front leg. Good. Come back into your hands. Listen up. You're going to straighten your front leg. Now, as you straighten that front leg, that left hip is going to roll back so that the hips feel even. If you put your left hand to your sacrum, it feels pretty even. It's not going to be exact, but pretty even. Maybe you slide your hands forward toward the back of your chair and let the chest get really long. Now push through your back leg. Some of you can then take those hands to your blocks. Little bit lower, still the hips are level, press through the back leg. Big deep breath, everyone. And then hands come to your chair. Woo! Bend that front leg. Slide your left foot back. And then step forward with your right foot. Bend both knees. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, your hands to your heart. Feel your left leg versus your right leg. <laughs> right? It's like, what just happened? Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Here we are again. Head can go to chair. Hands can go to blocks. Hands can even go to fingertips to the floor. Check your weight on your feet. Try to stay in the middle. Pause. And then take your hands back to your chair. You're halfway up. You're going to step back with your left foot. And again, I would adjust the right foot forward so that you're not overreaching uh, to the chair. So we're going to pause here again. It's a super soft touch with the hands. We're using the core instead. I'm going to play with that hip line and see where it feels the most steady. Maybe squeeze the back glute. Right? Breathe. Take your elbows down to your chair. 
Find your breath, everyone. Good, notice, right? Where is the sensation? Push into the back leg, back leg, back glute active. You got it. And then hands come to chair again, straight in the front leg. And it's a soft, light touch. I could take one hand off, the other hand off, right? The hips start to level. For me, the right hip dra uh, draws back a little bit more. Maybe the hand slide to the front of the chair or the back of the chair, really. But try to keep the torso long, right? There's a real um, tendency to round the spine here. Let's see if we can stay long. And then take the hands down to your blocks if that's appropriate. If your front hamstring is screaming at you, you're too low, everyone. You know. Big, deep breath. Big, big, big. And then slide those hands back to your chair. Bend the front knee. Walk that foot back. Step forward. Bend both knees. Inhale, reach up. Exhale to your heart and shake that out. Inhale it up, take it up. Exhale, hands to your chair or to your blocks. And then take the hands to your chair halfway up. Walk your left foot forward and step your right foot back. And then turn your back foot to the side position. So this is warrior one stance, front heel to back arch. We're turning the chest and opening that up. And Carrie, if you want to switch sides just to see, um, and then just remember <laughs> and breathe. So what do we do here? We're toning in, right? The chest is opening. I'm going to push really strongly into the back leg and just float the front leg up. One thing we can do sometimes is just let the chair seat rest at the knee and that gives us a little bit of feedback and then pull the torso back a little bit. Squeeze in through the belly, find your breath and then take the back hand down, reach the top arm up, don't overdo it. Breathe, maybe look down toward the floor behind you. And then release warrior two, straighten the front leg. Now we're in triangle pose. The front hand is gonna go to the chair, right? Chair hasn't moved. <laughs> this shoulder rolls back, take the other arm up. And then maybe overhead, maybe you bend the elbow. Yeah, don't overdo it. Breathe. And then take that hand to your chair. Look at your chair. Turn your back foot. Straighten your front leg. Drop the head toward the chair. The hands come back down to the, the hands come back down to your blocks. The chair is at a height where I can just rest my forehead on the chair. That may or may not work for you. No pressure on the head, the neck. Hands come back to your chair. Bend your front knee. Slide the foot back if it slid under the chair and step forward. Bend both knees. Inhale, reach up. Exhale it right to your heart. Find mountain pose and release that. And then notice, right? How did that feel in your body? If you need to, you can switch the chair to the other side, but I think everybody will be all right. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Go to your chair, to your blocks. Pause, get to the middle of your feet, right? My first stance is in the heat. I lean into the heels and then I draw the hips forward. Imagine your outer ankle bone and your outer hip bone lining up straight ahead. If I bring my hips back, then the hip bone is behind my ankle. So if that makes sense to you, we're, we're stacking those joints one on top of the other. And then take your hands to your chair, come halfway up, soften the knees and step back left leg. Always in warrior, I'll find the lunge first because then I know my distance is good. 
And then I'll turn the back foot to the side position. I'm just going to walk my front foot forward so my knee touches uh, the chair just for that feedback. And then I'm going to float the arms up, press through the back leg, back glute active. I'm trying to press the outer uh, edge of my back foot into the mat. The belly is toned, the torso is staying right over the center line of my body. Take the back hand down, take the top arm or the front arm up and breathe, exalted warrior. Release, take the arms up, the hand comes down to the chair, the front arm opens, uh, or sorry, the front leg straightens the front arm opens that made no sense the front leg straightens the chest opens now i'm in triangle pose taking the top arm up some of you can come to elbow nope that's not going to work on this side going to honor that and breathe and then bend the front knee take the torso up Pivot to your chair, straighten the back foot, and then straighten the front foot. Uh, variation here, a pyramid pose. You can come to your elbows, or you can take your hands to your blocks. Find your breath, everyone. Hands to chair, lift up halfway, slide your front foot back, step forward, bend both knees, inhale, reach up, exhale to your heart, and shake that out, just shake it out. Good, and then I want you to turn your chair around so that the back of the chair is to you. Now, if you're working with a really heavy chair, just don't worry about that one little bit. You're gonna take, you're gonna just really rest your palms on your chair and you're gonna lean back until you think your ankles are over your hips. It's a very hard thing to find. Usually it takes someone else's eyes. That looks pretty good, Carrie. Your hips are a little back, but not much. Breathe. And then look at your chair. Now remember this position, this chair gets really tippy, so don't pull back. Look at your chair, step forward just a little with your right leg and lift your left leg. Once you do that, take the hands down to the back of your chair, the back seat of your chair. And find that, find that really strong lift of the leg. You're in the center line of your standing leg. Um, for my friend there, you might be able to take one hand off and rest it. I'm not sure about this one. Breathe. And then really tone the belly in as if you could take the tailbone all the way to the wall behind you. Breathe. Step that leg down. Pause. Take your hands to the top of your chair and then lift up all the way. Whew. Squeeze your hips. Squeeze your glutes. Good. Same thing, other side. You're going to rest those fingers and then walk the feet back so that you're really long in your pose. So this is an l shape pose. It's a really nice pose. It's a pre precursor to Warrior Three. You can bend the knees a little bit. It's a kind of an interesting shift if you just put a soft bend in the knees, but then draw the low ribs in, get the spine really long. And then look at the chair, step forward a little bit with your left and lift your right. And then take your hands to the lower seat. Arms are straight, the forearms or the, uh, or the biceps are resting at the back of the chair. We're finding this nice level line. Breathe. And lower that foot. Whew. Bend both knees. Take the hands to the top of the chair and stand up. Oh, good. Nice squeeze of that, of those glutes as we work the leg. 
So this one um, is kind of interesting and I find this one a bit fun. You're gonna keep your left foot forward. Um, and again, my darling Julie uh, probably won't be able to do this with one hand. You're gonna take your left hand to the seat over the chair. So you're just gonna lean over. And when you do that, your other hand can stay on the back of the chair for support. And then you're gonna lift your back leg, yeah. The toes point to the side. I'm in the center line, ankle to hip. The hand presses into the chair to get me long. The body gets really long. And then I'm just going to see if I can take the hand off the top of the chair to my hip. This is half moon. Push into the standing leg. If you're still good, yep, I'm a little wobbly. You can change the position of your hand that's resting on the chair. And then if you're still good, take the top arm up. Half moon pose. Release that top hand to your chair. Turn your torso back toward the chair and release. Ooh, shake that out. Half moon pose. Love that pose. Love it on the chair in particular. It takes some of the balance work out of it. All right, other side. So right foot is forward. And what I had to do on the other side, by the way, my hand was more center of the chair and I had to take it to the outside edge of the chair a little bit more for my balance. And that's the case with half moon. Often the block is to the outside of the foot instead of directly in front of it. So if you feel that the balance is a little funky, um, see if that works for you. Right foot forward. One hand goes to the chair seat. The other leg lifts and I'm just gonna think about it. What do I need to do to make half moon solid here? Oh, this is kind of interesting. I <laughs> see some things I discover uh, in class is I've just put my elbow to the back of the chair and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, is that stable, right? Something just changed completely as opposed to the arm straight. So play with that. The front leg hip is lined up. The arm presses in, other arm can go up. The wind's blowing, but we are solid. Whoo, breathe. Tone in through the belly, everybody. Find your pose. Release the top hand to the top of the chair. Turn your torso back to the chair and then let go. And shake that baby out. <sighs> nice job. Turn your chair back so that the seat is facing. Seat is facing you. Take both of your blocks. And this is because we're all different heights. Okay. So take both blocks. Stack one on top of the other. And just have it in front of your chair. <sighs> Roll your shoulders. Here's what we're going to do, and it's in stages, tall, short. You're going to decide for you. Your hands go to your hips, and I'm just going to take my left foot. I'm going to tap the block. If that's okay, now this is going to be balance work. So what's going on with the standing leg? Roop, right? We are drawing those muscles into the bone. We're stacking the... Okay, <laughs> excuse me. Where did that come from? We're stacking the hip, ankle to hip, right? I'm just got the ball mound on here. I'm toning in through the belly. So here's my first choice. If you're good here, if this seems about the right height, how would you know? Maybe your leg is already parallel, right? Your thigh is already parallel. You're just going to see if you can lift it off the block. You're still good. Tap it to the front of your chair instead. Level out the hips. You got your hands on your hips to feel that. Good here. Lift the foot just off the chair. Still good. Take that leg to the back of the chair. I know. And take the arms up. Breathe. Take your hands back to your hips. You're going to tap the chair seat. You're going to tap your blocks. 
you're going to come back to the floor. Right, so really interesting. Again, a variation of hand to big toe pose, right? This would be that, but I, the chair goes, oh, look at all these options. It's like taking these steps up. We're going to go back to the same leg, same side. Get really tall. The hands to the hips give you tons of feedback. So the first thing I want you to do is tap your block. Lift your foot off the block. You might just stay here. By the way, balance challenges. You've got one hand to a wall. Take it to the chair. Keep it light. Lift that off. Okay. Still good. Take that foot to the back of the chair. I'm actually kind of almost wrapping my toes around the back of the chair. Drop the hips. Level it out. Get really tall in the standing leg. Take the arms up, everyone. Find your breath. And then take your hands to your hips. Tap the seat of your chair. Tap your blocks and let go. Ooh, yeah, good job. So it's as much work on the standing leg as it is on the lifted leg. What do we work in these hip flexors, right? Not to mention the whole hip glue to the standing leg. So let's go to the other side. And I do like these options because I'm tall enough, this chair isn't super high for me. If you're shorter stature, that's going to be a much harder move to get the leg to there to there. So just think about it, right? Don't overdo. Stand tall, good solid mountain pose. Take your foot to your other foot, by the way, to your blocks, and then solidify the standing leg. The belly is toned in, the chest is tall. Maybe you lift that foot off your block. If you're working with balance and you don't have a wall, you just put that foot right back down on the blocks and you play there. Otherwise, take it up to the seat. Standing leg strong. That glute should be active, active. Still good, lift it off the chair. Still good, take it to the back, uh, the back of your chair. Squeeze the standing leg, take the arms up. Breathe. Hands back to your hips, find your balance. Take it to the chair, take it to your block. Let go fully, take it out. Notice if you felt the strong need to look at the chair, look at the blocks as you came down, or can you keep your gaze out while you're stepping down, right? Again, it's that same thing as the chair, right? Nothing is moved. So can we trust that it will be there? <laughs> it is interesting. Okay, here we go. Second time. Stand tall. Take your foot to your blocks. Same side. Squeeze the standing leg. Belly is toned in. Lift off the block. Take it to your chair. Find your still point in front of you. Lift off the chair. Still good. Take it to the chair back. Make sure your standing leg is very, very solid. Every muscle should be firing. The arms go up. Your foot on the chair is pretty darn light. Breathe. Hands to hips. Tap the back or tap the seat, chair seat. Tap your block <laughs> and let go. Ooh, good job, everybody. Just shake that out. That's a lot of work for the standing leg. <sighs> you can move your blocks to the side for now. Inhale, reach up. Exhale all the way down. Hands or elbows can go to chair or forehead can go to chair. Hands can rest either on the floor or even on the chair legs or whatever feels really nice to you here. And breathe. Come into the middle of the feet. I just realized I was at the heels, so I just moved my head forward so that I could stay in the middle line. Take those hands to your chair. Come halfway up. Step both feet back so you're back in an L shape. Not too far. 
Take the left leg straight back. One, you're here, that's plenty. Two, you can come to elbows just to get off your hands. Three, you're gonna take one hand to the back of your chair. One, you're here. Two, you're taking the other one back. You're resting the palms. This is warrior three, resting those palms on the back of your chair. Don't push that chair back. Woo, hands to chair. Release the leg, Ooh, bend the knees, and come on up. I find that a really challenging one. I see it all the time in chair yoga poses, but because you got to work everything to hold that body in that position. All right, let's do the other side, and then we're done with all that. So once again, we're here. Take your hands to your chair. You're looking for that kind of an L shape, and it's hard because once we extend the arms out, our legs might not quite be in alignment. So from here, and again, you can drop to elbows. Let's take the other leg up. I forgot which leg we started with. Do you remember, Carrie? On my right. Breathe. Funny. I forgot. Yeah, that feels right. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Sorry, left leg, lift your right leg. Yeah, I thought I started with my right. All right, so the left hand goes to the back of the chair. Careful here, the right hand can go to the back of the chair. Extend out. I am pushing down with my palms into the chair, not forward, but down. And release, holy moly, harder on that side. Ooh, bend your knees. Come on up, everybody. Roll it out. And then this one's going to feel a little bit weird, but take your chair um, somewhere at the middle of your mat. <clears throat> now, if you happen to have a blanket, you can use a blanket. Carrie and I both have chair cushions. So you're just going to take anything you got over the edge of your chair. And again, this is gonna depend on how tall you are. So lean in and put your hands down on the chair, step back. It is a down dog on your chair. So ideally you're somewhere around the hip line and then you can walk your hands down. And if you are of the right height, this feels marvelous. And if you're not, if your hands don't reach the floor, you can take them to your chair legs. How are you doing, Carrie? You can go to fingertips and something I should have cued would have been blocks to your for your hands. Mm. This is like the sweetest little traction if you can get there. Hands um, can be on blocks to lift. <sighs> Hardest part, getting out, everyone. So walk your hands to the middle of your chair seats. I'm actually grabbing the sides of my chair. And then I'm going to push up and lift off that chair and come to standing. <sighs> and then what do you feel? All the blood rushing back into the legs, right? Because we, we gave those uh, femoral arteries a little bit of work there. All right, so come on back to your chair. And have a seat. I might grab my shirt again. I got a little chilled, which is hard to believe for me. <laughs> Doesn't usually happen. <laughs> oh, there. Good. And feel that. Feel your body. Grab your strap. Sorry, uh, uh, the computer decided to talk to me because it picked up something I said and then it gave me good advice about stretching. It was really funny. All right, so I don't know if those online heard that, but that was annoying. <laughs> Take the strap and tighten up your loop so that it is uh, around the thighs, a couple inches above the knees, right? It's right here. And it's 
so that as you press your legs out, the, the legs are still staying about hips width apart and you've got lots of pressure pressing out. So you've got a, uh, you should feel this, right? They should feel this activity happening. And then sit up nice and tall. Close the eyes and just feel again this work. This is working down into glute medius, right? We're getting into the lower glute muscles. The chest is tall. We're finding our hips. We're just reaching into those deep muscles around the hips. I firmly believe that as we continue to work and strengthen um, the muscles around the joints, whether it's shoulders or hips, or knees, that we will keep those joints healthier a little bit longer. Deep breath, everybody. If you think I am not feeling this, I am, just so you know. And then let go. It is truly amazing. Go ahead and slide that strap off. You're going to take that loop around your right foot. I'm going to mirror here. And most of you should be able to just grab, it's a small loop, I know, but you should be able to grab that end of it and then take the leg up. And if not, hold anywhere that makes sense for you. Take the other arm up, roll the shoulders so that they're level. So if you're overreaching the, uh, that arm, then um, bring the strap, make the strap longer. All right, so you're gonna take that leg out to the side. Hold, breathe, <clears throat> notice, lift tall. It can go further out if you want. And then bring it to center, grab that loop with the other hand. Woo! Take that out, oh yeah. <laughs> right, so we are stretching what we just worked the heck out of. Find your breath. And then just let the knee bend. Take the strap out. Bring both knees back to center. And roll over those knees. Find your breath. <laughs> That's it. Deep breath in. Deep breath out, everybody. And then hands come to chair, lift up nice and tall. Come on up and undo those legs. Same thing, other side, let's loop the left leg. Take it up. <clears throat> Nice attention to the leg, nice flex, chest lifted, arm comes up, lift tall, deep breath. Take it out to the side, the arm goes out, the leg relatively straight, doesn't have to be perfect. The other foot is stamped down. And then bring it across, grab the strap, take that leg across. Yeah. Everybody gets that sensation, by the way. It's just a matter of intensity. You got it. And then just bend the knee. Let the strap go. Let it come cross knees. And then just walk the knees back to center because we'll tend to be off to one side. And roll on down. Just breathe here. Take your hands to your chair, lift your head, neck, chest, come all the way up. Undo the legs, take your legs wider. My feet are pointing straight ahead. I'm gonna start with elbows to knees. In fact, if you've got a couple blocks, maybe you have those as well. It's Getting windy. <clears throat> Whew. 
And just breathe. Just feel that. Again, the sit bones are pulling to the back chair. Take your hands to your blocks if that is appropriate for you. <clears throat> Again, be mindful of your back. If you're still okay, you can take your hands to the floor instead. <clears throat> Deep breath. I, I don't love rounding here. If you want to round, just be really cautious of the low back. And then hands to your blocks come part way up. And hands to your chair come part way up. Lift all the way up. Woo! Yes, indeed. You can move those blocks out of the way. You're going to turn sideways. One foot forward. Ideally, that foot is solid on the floor. The other leg is going to scoop back. You have to be careful here that the chair doesn't tip. And really, this one whole leg has to be hanging off the chair. Um, my hand is at the back of the chair. My other one is to the front of the chair. And then if you can, you're going to walk that foot back. At the same time, you're tucking the pelvis in. You should be feeling a stretch in the front quad. If that hurts the top of your foot, you can stay. Um, you can stay with those toes flipped under, I find that a little harder to access. Breathe. And then listen up very seriously here. If you've got a solid grip of your, say this is my left leg, if you're solid on your right leg, right glute, you can reach back and grab the chair. If you're closer to the edge of your chair, please don't lift that foot off the ground. Quad stretch. Try to keep the torso lifted, everyone. And release it. Oh, come forward. I know, right? It's just amazing. Like every, and we work the legs really hard. So to stretch, especially the quad, we did a lot of hamstring stretching, but to stretch the quads, to get into those uh, always tight muscles for most of us. So we start on the chair, the foot is back. There's a tuck of the pelvis, right? So I'm trying to draw the lower belly in. You can lean back a little bit. You'll find a little more stretch. One side always more so than the other. Only if you feel stable, reach and grab the foot. Make sure the one arm is holding on to the back of the chair to keep that weight there. And breathe. And release. Woo, step it forward. Good. You're going to come up to standing because we're going to come down to the floor. So come on up. See if you can use no hands. Good job. Take the chair so that it is facing. The seat is going to face you. If you happen to have a... Um, a cushion or a blanket, I would go ahead and just put that right on the chair. And I'm doing this mostly because it got windy and I don't want this thing to go flying. <laughs> Good. Now, getting on the floor, right, from a chair. Um, there's tons of ways of doing that. If you're really comfortable and your knees are okay, you can hold on to the sides of the chair and do a little dip action, right? So that you just drop down to your knees. If that doesn't work, please do it in a way that feels safer. And then release it and come on to your butt. You're going to take the left foot through your chair. You're, and you'll need to sit close enough, not super close, but close enough that you can reach. And the nice thing about the chair is you can move it as needed. So you're facing that chair nice and straight, nice and steady. Lift up through the chair or through the chest. And just breathe for a moment. So Janu Sursasana. You can take your hands to your chair. And breathe. 
And if you're still okay, uh, one of the things I love is just to take your forehead to the edge of your chair. Your hands can come down and you're just pausing, right? You're not coming all the way down to your leg. You're not doing all that stuff, but you're allowing your forehead to rest hopefully on something soft. If not, you can use your hands, by the way. Feeling the left a thigh bone, the left femur, draw back the hips, drawing forward. Take a really deep breath. Just soften here. Poses like this one, it is a supported forward fold. It allows your nervous system to calm down. And you can feel it in your body. You can feel everything settling down. Good. <clears throat> if your forehead's resting, go ahead and lift it up. Sit up really, really tall. Bend this, um, take the bent knee and lift it straight up and then step it over. <clears throat> take, it's my left leg that's long. Take the left hand to the chair. Take the right hand behind you. So we're doing a seated twist. Nice deep breath, everybody. Big deep breath, big let's go. And come back to center, release that leg, straighten it through the chair. And I didn't mention it on the other side, I'm sorry about that, but if you take my classes at any level, you know, right, if your knee is really high, go ahead and support it with your block. And if that hurts your knee to compress, you just move that foot forward or change your pose. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, you can take your hands to the chair and just let the torso get long. And if you feel marvelous here, you can take your forehead to the chair, just adjust, and then your hands can come just to the floor on either side of your chair legs. Let it be soft, everybody. Deep breath in, deep, let's go. And then bring the hands to your chair, lift up. Ooh. Take the bent knee and point it straight up. Cross that foot over. Your right hand goes to the left side of your chair and your left hand goes behind. Maybe a smile a little bit. And center. Good. Last one here. You're going to do a Baddha Konasana. The chair is optional. If your legs allow, you're going to take your legs to the outside chairs and the soles of your feet together. It may not allow that. 
right? Your legs just might not do that. In that case, just push the chair out of the way and have it more for your head. And then just take your arms, your chest forward and breathe. Might be my new way to watch TV or something. <laughs> is long, the sit bones are moving back. Hmm. Another option here, if your uh, body feels really good is you can just kind of lift your chair to the outside. And again, take forehead or arms to the chair. So that makes it much deeper. I'm in a very long Baddha Konasana. I'm in a very long pose. So I have a lot of space between the heels and the groin. Wherever you are, come out easily, gently, bring both knees together. And then we can't do a chair pose without legs up the chair. It is just a beautiful way to end. This will be our Shavasana. So if you don't like the idea of your legs going up, um, then move the chair. So ideally, your feet, if you, a lot of us, our feet hit the back of the chair. So if you have an open back, you're just going to take those feet through. If you don't, you might want to just have the legs up, um, resting at the back of the chair instead of trying to cram them in. Um, it's nice if the back of the knees can touch the back of the chair somehow. Um, it helps a lot with um, hip uh, stability, hip release. So find that the arms can come down to your sides, your legs are comfortable. We allow this pose to overtake us. Our eyes are closed. And the hands can either rest at the low belly or out to the sides. Allow the back to settle. Just breathe, everybody. Feel your belly soften. Feel your back soften.
See if you can soften even more. So some of you might want to just stay right here. This feels marvelous. You may want to stay and just take another five minutes to really incorporate this pose in your class. And if not, just slide one foot out and bring that knee to your chest. And then slide the other foot out and bring that to chest and just let the back round rocking side to side. Eventually let those knees roll over to one side, curl over in fetal pose. Take a really deep breath here. And then careful of your chair being close by, come on up to a seat. <sighs> Bring the arms up, take a deep inhale. Exhale to your heart. Bow to your own inner strength, inner wisdom, your inner teacher. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming to class. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay.